Hello there. Today I'm with my husband, Nigel. Say hello, Nigel. Hi, hello. Uh, to discuss something that we worked on a few years ago, which is a website called Dozy Days. It's all about ME and related conditions. The one thing that we tried to do was put a slightly different slant to most ME-based sites, and that was to use quite a few graphs or polls that we did, and polls from friends who we know who did some on their local ME groups. The one that caught the most interest for us in the amount of numbers is a poll Nigel put on the website, um, which was about the three main symptoms that disabled ME people. So do you want to say a bit about that, Nigel? Yeah, I've been interested for a few years on a symptom poll, as I've never really seen one. And I'm not saying that they don't exist, but I haven't come across any. Certainly not online, and the penny dropped, why don't I do one? So people put their three symptoms which render their lives hard to deal with. I was in the beginning looking for 50 people so I could ascertain a decent amount of people so to give a good guide of the suffering of people. Quite amazingly over 130 took part. There were people saying well I only put two in because my other symptom wasn't a choice on the poll, why is it not there? Well I knew the ones that are going to be the disabling for most. For example buzzing sensations I know a lot of people get but in itself it's not going to put you in bed necessarily. Okay, so what did you find most interesting then? Well, I found the depression and anxiety problems came very low down on the poll. Only about 12% of people suffer to the point that it's in their top three symptoms. But probably we all go through these problems to one degree or another. It's not a primary mental disorder. And what did you find interesting? Well, even though people may pick the top three symptoms, these symptoms can actually fluctuate from day to day anyway. So... At the time of the poll, I put nausea, pain and weakness, whereas now I would choose a, a different three, so it's just a rough guide. I think it's good that people had an opportunity to say about their symptoms, because in my experience, with something like NHS AMI clinics, we get told how we're supposed to feel. So if we don't fit into it, into that, we are an unusual case, which, I mean, I was told my ME is rare, but I know this is to be nonsense. Yeah, I think your level of ME is relatively common among ME. About 25% of people go through severe ME. I know that when I was bedridden for the best part of four years, although our ME is very different, I didn't get nausea at all and I didn't get pain either, but I get them now more than I did then. Even function at low level it's very different, as our main symptoms was an absence of a brain. That was mine. I just didn't seem to have a one. Yes, ME is a very individual illness brought on by individual circumstances. I believe there is a genetic factor which makes us prone, uh, which is why recovery is an individual thing. So what works for one won't work for another. But it doesn't mean that the person who did recover through whatever means didn't have ME. That is something I've learned over the last six months. And I've also learned that you can recover fully from this illness. And I've met the people who have. So whoever watches this video, never believe that you will always feel this way, because you won't. You can get well. Yeah, so I hope someone will find that helpful, and we shall endeavour to bring you some more polls, results that we've done, and discuss those too. Okay, bye then.